Hello and welcome to the India EV Conclave. I am delighted to be jo joined by Mr. Anant Bajatia, who is here, who is the CEO at Indofast Energy. So, uh, charging infrastructure are like the building blocks for any EV ecosystem to sort of take off and to reach to the next level, that, that inception point to come in. So, uh, if you could start with just that, uh, it has been one of the challenges in India and quite a few global markets as well. But where are we when it comes to the charging infrastructure if you do, would want to sort of get into it right away. Sure. Thanks. Uh, thanks for having me, first of all. See, uh, charging infrastructure in India, while we know has grown significantly over the last few years, is still woefully inadequate. Correct. We have sub-30,000 chargers across India, which is close to, let's say, one charger for more than 150 or 190 vehicles. The world average in big markets, uh, good markets like China is 1 is to 6, 1 is to 10. Yeah. In Nordic is 1 is to 30, something like that. So we are way, way behind, right? And so a lot of work needs to be done. There are a lot of studies which say that we need from 30,000 by 2030, there are studies which say from 375,000 chargers to 1.3 million chargers are required. According to me, even that estimate is a bit uh, low mm -hmm. because if we want to build uh, EV network, the EV uh, needs to be done in India, which is 75% is two-wheeler, three-wheeler, which is very easy to electrify. We need a much bigger charging system. Mm -hmm. And uh, today, uh, I think a lot of investments that have gone in uh, are, 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 are short, I would say. I think, uh, let's say China has done close to 17 to $20 billion of investment. Against that, we have a puny less than half a billion. Yeah. Right? So we have tall claims to do. Right, we want to make it big, but I think a lot of work needs to be done, and that's where I think in the last two three years, while we are at six seven percent electrification today, uh, a lot of work needs to be done. It's mostly in the urban cities that we have gone there, and things will improve. If I talk about swapping, that's where I think we believe uh, swapping can be a very good catalyst to electrification in mm -hmm. India, because it brings in a lot of things that a normal charge point uh, sometimes doesn't is not able to. Just to talk a bit about Indofast, Indofast is a joint venture. It's a 50-50 joint venture of Sun Mobility and Indian Oil. Uh, it's one of the biggest investments of Indian Oil in the EV space. Yeah. Uh, they committed 2,500 crores. Uh, so today, Indofast is close to around 1,200 charge uh, swapping stations across India. We do close to around 60 to 70,000 swaps a day. Wow. Uh, with more than 50,000 vehicles on our platform, we sell close to, close to around 2.8 gigawatt hours of energy per month today. So, which is significant. So, I think, and we've be, we been able to do these 1,200 uh, stations in a very short period of less than two years. Yeah. And 1,200 stations is actually around 18,000 chargers. So, 18,000 chargers, because every station has around 15 chargers in them. Mm -hmm. And each, each station can do 200 bikes a day. So if you think about it, we have a seriously big capacity and that's how the, it can be rolled out much faster in urban cities and uh, that's where I think uh, swapping is playing a very big role uh, right. in making it, uh, in expediting EV in India. Yeah, one of the biggest challenges that uh, automakers face because it is, like you said, one of the fundamental issues why the industry is not taking off as fast as we would have liked it is it's a very capital intensive industry charging setting up charging infrastructure both for swappable and fixed uh, batteries so how how to solve for that is there uh, like an investment freeze that is sort of uh, uh, i mean is a deterrent what what is the solution what is the way out how should colla oems collaborate a lot more uh, to solve for this it's it's not only capital intensive, it's also very operations heavy. Mm. We tend to forget that actually doing an investment is still okay. But most of the times you find in India, a lot of the charges that you put, they're not working. Mm. There's a lot of theft, a lot mm. of abuse. Mm. People don't realize that, you know, uh, when they're making the investments that you need uh, full-time manpower. Manpower itself for a full-time 24 by 7 on one station would cost you 60 to 70,000 rupees per yeah. month. Yeah. Nobody calculates that. So it's not only the capital in mm. intensity, it's also very OPEX intensive if you have to do it in the right way. So I think uh, we have to follow a telecom model, you know, where, you know, you share it, you co-locate, mm. and you, uh, a lot of people can use it. Mm. So the revenues can be shared, the 
uh, OPEX can be shared and the capital uh, in, uh, capital investment can also be shared. While well, uh, telecom towers are used by multiple companies together. Yeah. So same way, I think OEMs will have to come together to find out solutions. I, I think that's what uh, a lot of companies, charge, uh, charging companies are doing. Mm. But uh, capital intensity is one problem. According to me, operations is a bigger problem today. In interoperability. Mm -hmm. Not interoperability. It's about how to maintain that station. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, how to ensure that, you know, one out of three chargers are not working in this country yeah. today. You invest so much and you only find out and that And you have they, nowhere to complain. Yeah, nowhere yeah. to complain and yeah. even, you know, people are finding how to handle that. There are thefts, that people are cutting the guns, cutting, taking out the copper wires from the stations and all. Mm -hmm. That actually kills the entire uh, business model because mm -hmm. you never plan for those sort of uh, absurdity, <laughs> absurdities. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But interoperability, uh, like I just mentioned, it, that's again a big challenge and that again needs OEM collaboration. So interoperability is not a very big challenge in the point charging mm. because a lot of OEMs are following the standards. It's a it's a challenge in the swapping network Correct. system that we talk about. In swapping, uh, we are uh, Indofast is interoperable. We have around 44 vehicle, different vehicles which can use the same system, like uh, 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 Piaggio Auto, uh, e rickshaw, uh, MPA bike, uh, bounce bike. Everybody can use the same bike, same station, and the same uh, battery. But it is not usable outside the Sun Mobility or Indofast system. That's mm -hmm. we are interoperable, but not interoperable. Mm -hmm. So swapping system uh, is, uh, is is what we are talking about interoperability. Uh, we have a lot of views why it should not be yet. I yeah. think uh, we should give it time. It's still in a nascent stage, and let the market define what's the right standard. Mm -hmm. rather than defining how to work it out. And we believe we'll get there in, in the space of, let's say, in less than two years, we have done 44 different uh, vehicle types. Okay. So a lot of vehicles are coming uh, on our platform. And slowly and slowly, within maybe next one and one and a half years, we'll see that we can we can be the standard to go by. These are both for two-wheelers and three-wheelers. Two-wheelers, three-wheelers, e-rickshaws, mm -hmm. same battery, same mm -hmm. station, same system for across and the platform. And it works very well. It is working. We, are doing, uh, we have done 130 crore kilometers till now without any issue. Yeah, and uh, what what for Indofast Energy? What is the next phase of growth look looking like? Are you targeting more tier two, tier three cities, or want to expand further deeper into the metros first? What is the growth yeah. map looking like? No, very good you? question. Uh, so as of today, we are in 22 cities uh, and with 1,200 stations. Over the next three years, we want to do around 15,000 stations across 42 cities, mm -hmm. right? And close to a million vehicles on our platform. Uh, so uh, we will be spending close to 10,000 crores over the next three years to set up world, world's biggest battery swapping network in India, mm. right? So that, and we will be focusing mostly on tier one, tier two cities, 42 cities in India, and uh, before getting into any other further, because we we believe it's an inkblot strategy for us, mm. because. Uh, you know, uh, somebody who goes for battery swapping, he's dependent on that uh, operator. So he can't go to anybody else. So we want yeah. to ensure that once you go for a battery swapping vehicle, that we have enough, uh, you know, uh, stations in the uh, in, in the vicinity for you to not worry about uh, bat uh, availability of the battery or the battery, uh, range anxiety. Yeah. So that's how it's an in ink plot strategy that we go with. We go deep into each city. For example, in Delhi and CR, we have close to around 500 stations already. Less than two kilometers, we find a station. Yeah. So very, very dense network. In Bangalore, we have 300. In Hyderabad, we have 125. So we are going deeper into each city that we are picking and setting up the network for intra-city good uh, commute. Yeah. And also, when it comes to policy perspective, EVs, uh, battery swapping, uh, uh, EVs, uh, batteries are charged differently. Uh, EVs are charged at 5%. So that discrepancy, your industry has been fighting for a lot yeah. to sort of get that kind of relief and parity from a policy perspective. Yes, that, that has been a long battle. <laughs> uh, because 18%, uh, so the issue today is what we are asking the government is give us a uh, level playing field, mm. not treat us like a distant cousin of uh, fixed battery. Uh, because uh, if it is charged, uh, so you can buy a vehicle without a battery today at 5% GST, but if you have to buy a battery, it Correct. is at 18%. Percent. But when you're buying a fixed battery vehicle, it is coming at 5%. Yeah. So that creates uh, some, uh, you know, uh, uh, discouragement. Uh, for, discouragement. Yeah. So uh, overall, that's what we are asking for. It's We understand because uh, GST is, is a difficult subject. A lot of uh, stakeholders have to come together to, to, to arrive at that 5% because the issue is, uh, the, I think uh, there's a belief that if you give 5% on, on battery swapping vehicles, 
how do you define that it is only used for the vehicle alone not for anything mm. else mm. because the energy sales is at 18% even for a fixed battery vehicle yeah. yeah so energy sale is 18% so idea is how do we ensure that it's only used for the battery swapping only okay. and not for any other thing anything those are the discussions that we are having we are we believe that uh, 5% if it is done it will be a big boost for the battery swapping industry and yeah. uh, we have given up that proposal and let's see how it works yeah for india is battery swapping a better solution for the uh, segment that you target uh, three wheelers two wheelers and is, is that a better solution because even there there seems to be a discrepancy because uh, ev two wheelers and three wheelers have really grown uh, tangentially for like if you look at last five years data so how, how do you see the growth vis-a-vis -vis, uh, their preference for battery swapping improving so battery uh, very good question again see battery swapping is a very complex technology right and i think uh, now in the last uh, two years what we have seen we have become a default choice for any b2b fleet operator in the country if uh, uh, so we work with a lot of big fleet operators and they have realized that battery swapping actually is much more beneficial much more in terms of tco it beats uh, fixed battery anytime so yes in terms of the because a normal fleet operator uses a bike for let's say 3000 to 4000 kilometers a month mm. as against a normal b2c usage is only 500 kilometers so we have shown it at serious scale that battery swapping works and also in terms of the tco it's 40% uh, uh, better than a petrol and much better than a fixed battery but i think we have to bring in the right oems at place for it to mm. grow at that scale and uh, it is growing at a good scale we have we have close to already 60000 vehicles on our platform will be going 100% in the next 6 months mm. and i think today overall as a battery swapping industry we have close to around 5000 battery swapping stations across india uh, where big players like battery smart and yuma and uh, honda and us we are growing and i think uh, honda coming in as battery swapping clearly gives it a boost as well that's right it's battery swapping is there for the B2C customers yeah, as well. Yeah, so it yeah it's one of the major players that yes. have sort of stepped in. Even Hero has come with a removable yeah. battery. So yeah. there are like slowly and slowly it will build up. I think bat uh, fixed battery has been quite some time. Battery swapping is a new entrant. And it will, I think, uh, it's a bit complex. It's an infrastructure play. It's mm. not an OEM play mm. alone. Mm. So it will take some time, but it has a huge potential in, you know, in terms of because with the battery swapping, you don't have to worry about the cost of the battery. 40% cheaper than a normal fixed battery yeah. vehicle. You don't have to worry about range. It's limitless, limitless range. There's no technological obsolescence. You know, in a fixed battery, your battery can go uh, obsolete in two years, three years' time. You know, you buy a 18 lakh rupee vehicle and you realize, oh my God, I should have waited because earlier I was getting 300 kilometer range. Within six months, the OEM comes with a new uh, yeah. system, which yeah. is like same price, but uh, uh, much better range. In battery swapping, you don't have to worry about it because the battery doesn't belong to you. So it's like uh, you you will keep getting the upgrades um, as you get in your phone when there's a software, software upgrade. Yeah. So there's no technological obsolescence at all. And most importantly, safe. Most of the issues that you face are while charging, right? And when you're charging a fixed battery vehicle at home or wherever, charging in India, the, the grid system, the phases that you have, the uh, frequent power cuts yeah, and all, can, can take the toll on the battery and also on the safety. Mm -hmm. In a battery swapping, you're charging it at at, at very dedicated places they have to be charged. So we have done 130 kilometers till now, not one accident. Mm. Not one accident to talk about. Nobody else can claim that. Mm. And our battery goes in different, different type of vehicle types in different and not wedded to one specific vehicle that after that also. So the kind of safety that we have shown in battery swapping is, is different level all today. Right. So what do you think are the biggest deterrents at this point for the industry? One is obviously taxation policy parity that needs to be there. What else? Because uh, there needs to be more more competition, more players, more p price parity to to for it to make sense to from a TCO point of view for the customer. So what else can happen to make that In, in terms of battery swapping? Yeah, yeah. So battery swapping, I think one of the key things is we need to bring in more OEMs, hmm. which I think is happening uh, slowly and slowly. Uh, OEMs are realizing that it's not it's not uh, a competition it's a complement mm. we are we are giving we are working complementary like the, we are telling the OEMs that we are we are working with you and you are offering a full suite of offering to the customer so customer let the customer decide you don't decide what the customer wants mm. let the customer decide whether he wants a swap or a fixed or a cng or what let the customer decide yeah. and give them uh, options and we are an infrastructure player we are actually helping them because if they want to go for a battery swapping they cannot set up the infrastructure 
for mm. that. Mm. We are there like a, a Jio or a Airtel, like a telecom operator. Yeah. You know, you decide what phone to buy, but then which operator to go with. So that's number one. So bringing in more good OEMs, TO and OEMs, which is happening now. Second is I think we need to work very closely with the government to set up policies on, on, on power. I think the biggest deterrent uh, or the hindrance is how to get the power. For example, a battery swapping station, if it needs a 40 kilowatt, then you need a transformer. Mm -hmm. That's a very costly affair. And these are different, different standards across different, different states. In, in Delhi, you need up to 200 kilowatt, you don't need a transformer. Mm -hmm. But in, in, in Telangana, different you need rooms, it yeah. less than 20 kilowatt, you need a transformer. Yeah. Very, uh, very different. So, and uh, getting a land acquisition and all those. So, I think uh, if we are able to settle those issues, that, that will help a lot. Sure. If you could leave us with Indo Fast's ambitions going forward, say, take a five year view, where do you want to reach the kind of penetration that you see, the kind of growth projections, if you could share with us today? Uh, so, we want to be in the next three years a million vehicles on our platform with more than 15,000 stations, right? We want to be the default choice for anybody buying a two-wheeler today. Today, for example, now nobody thinks of uh, buying a petrol vehicle, hmm. right? Today you think of Ola, Aether, Bajaj, yeah. it's it, there it, in the consideration. So fixed battery is already becoming a default choice. Hmm. I want to make the default choice a swap choice hmm. two years down the line that when somebody wants to buy a scooter, they think of swappable, not mm. a fixed, because mm. swappable is a wiser and a smarter choice. And, and makes more sense for fleet at this point? It makes more sense if it, see the thing is, if it makes more sense for fleet, because the fleet operators are the one who check for each and every penny. Yeah. If it makes sense for fleet, it will 10 times make more sense for a B2C operator. Mm. Because it because fleet operators, they go by, is it costing 1.21 rupees or yeah. 1.23 rupees? Yeah. That's the de depth they go into, because that's the kind of their usage. Right. So if it is making sense for TCO terms for a fleet operator, it will be definitely much better for a B2C operator. Any numbers that you can share in terms of penetration? Uh, what is the kind of penetration at this point in fleet for, for swappable and for B2C customers? So in, 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 in swappable in the fleet, I would say in the cities that we operate in, I can tell you that the share of wallet of all our customers is more than 70-80% for end of fast. Wow. Like if they if they have a swap option, they will never go for anything else. Mm. So only reason they would go for any other option is because I'm not present there. Okay. Right? Yes. Because when you are having a swappable option, then you don't worry about a battery going bad. Let's say if you have a thousand fleet, let's say in Delhi, how do you park a thousand scooter somewhere and some batteries go bad then all the time you're only talking to the OEM that my battery kharab ho gaya. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So the kind of work that goes on, on checking with the battery and then charging those batteries. For charging you have to actually uh, rent a space in Delhi. Because, and if you want to rent a space and if you don't have an uh, EV connection then you're paying 10 rupees. Mm. And if you have an EV tariff, then you have to rent it in your name and register in your name. So the multiple things, so, so, so once you go for a swappable option, all those issues around charging, around renting goes away. Then you can actually tell your drivers to take it home because you don't have to charge. It's safer. And I think so all uh, our customers, are, I have 70 to 80% share of wallet. Everybody today yeah. wants a swapping in terms of fleet. So in B2B, we are established that way. We are a default choice. In B2C, we're taking the first steps. Hmm. We're not there yet today. Because well, very few OEMs have that. Very few OEMs have there, and uh, you know, uh, we have. Uh, we were uh, first of all trying to prove our own things first, and setting up the network. For a B two B, you can start with small network and then grow it. For a B two C, you need a network already in place. Let's hmm. say you will not buy a scooter till hmm. the time you are sure that there is enough network Correct. coverage. Yeah. But a B two B player will only tell me, just put one station there. I can start it from origination there, and I can and slowly and slowly build it up. Yeah. And word of mouth is stronger yes. there. Yes. Yeah. So the ball is now in your court to expand yes. more stations, get into more cities, get deeper into the yes. markets that you are in. Yes. Very nice. All the best. Thank you so Thank much you. for spending Thank time you. with us.